Yo, Shalom, Shalom family. Thank y'all for logging in with us. Give us a few minutes. Uh, we'll be starting soon. Lesson is called What is an Elder? What does an elder look like? Especially in this time. What is an elder? So if y'all can while y'all logging on, if y'all could please share the video. Um continue to repost, show love. And copy the link. So this is what you do. Go to share. No options. And copy the link. Now we go. So where is the group chat at? Messages. Or the telegram? Okay. 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 Alright, we just dropped that boy in there. Shalom, 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 family. Shalom, family, shalom. 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 Alright, so I just shared it. Y'all could please share with the family. We're going to go into it on what is an elder. What is an elder in today's community? And are we in right standing based upon Torah, based upon the law, based upon the statutes and commandments of the Elohim, the creator of all things, heaven and earth? And so thank you for everybody who's, log who's uh, logged in, who's tapped in with us. We'll be listening live on this lesson. Please make sure you share it. We appreciate everybody's support thus far. Uh, before we get started, just want to give a reminder that we are doing a uh, registration for Feast of Education, uh, which will be December 21st. So you may want to register ASAP um, while we're getting people in. The last day to register, uh, register is December 10th. So please, please make sure you're sharing. Uh, continue to support the ministry, continue to support the body uh, of Mashiach, and we're going to get into this lesson. You want to uh, open us up a prayer? Simple prayer. Yeah, I'll do something. All right. So, again, my name is uh, Mikael Ben Yisrael Moray, which is teacher, teacher of Akai Maku Ministries located in Atlanta, Georgia. And to my left, we have Kanakia Ben Yahuda. And so, again, thank you all for tuning in. So we're going to open up with some prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for coming us, to us today. I thank you for, you know, gathering everybody else so we can do this lesson and pass on your word. And let us be humble servants and continue to do your good works. Father, I ask that you fill us with your spirit every day and continue to have us do your good works and spread your word. And, and be able to bring more people to you to your your spirit. Father, I thank you. Amen. 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 I want to give all praise and esteem and glory to our King, our total master, the creator and possessor of all things, the Elohim of all, Yahweh, and his only begotten Son, our King, and our Savior, and our Messiah, Yehoshua Mashiach. And so, uh, again, we thank you all for tuning in. Um, so today's lesson is called, What is an Elder? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting topic. Um, it could, in, in some cases, it could be a very touchy topic because just like love, we use the word elder very loosely. Um, just like, just like saying, it's a, uh, this is my ak, or this is my akot, we use the word elder very loosely without understanding the purpose of an elder and even how you become an elder, right? And I get it, we're in a time where, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to get back. But just like all things, even when it comes to eldership, you know, everything must be proven. Even the elder must prove the younger because he has to see if this young man is is worth investing in and is it worth his time. And so we want to get into that on what 
is an elder, right? What is an elder? What's the purpose of an elder? And so I want to start in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 14 and 40. And we want to give double honors to our elder, um, Adiah, Elder Adiah ben Yahuda, coming live from the house of Adiah. Again, Kyle Maku Ministries. We want to give double honors to our elder. We want to give double honors to Elder Thomas Murray. We want to give uh, double honors to Asa, Elder Asa, and all the RTA elders who are paving the way and getting back to um, an Edenic order, right? And so let's get to it. First Corinthians 14 and 40. Let all things be done decently. Come on, call it out. Uh, Let all things be done decently. Oh, where you at? Where you at? First Corinthians 14 and 40. Uh -huh. Let all things be done decently and in order. So let all things be done decently and in order, right? It has to be order in everything we do. Anything opposite of order, a lot of times it's chaos. Whether that's in relationships, whether that's in parenthood, whether that's in friendships, even when it comes down to eldership, everything must be in order. And if it's not, it's chaos. And a lot of times with chaos, it causes dysfunction. And so we being called the people of the book are called to fun function in an Elohistic way that represents the creator and why he created us. The creator is not a, a, a man, if you look at it like that, a man of confusion. He's not a man of, of double-mindedness. He's not a man with, 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 who deals with folly. And so we being in the likeness and the image of the Elohim, we have to function in the same exact way. And so we have to understand the function that was set in place in the beginning, right? And we're talking about nationhood, right? We understand the family. We, we, we set the foundation with the family a few weeks ago, right? And that was a part of Genesis. Then we came out of Genesis into Shemot, into Exodus, where we started to become a nation. And so when it becoming a nation, just like any other nation you see, there's order. When you look at America, they have some order, whatever you want to call it. They have order, right? They got a government, they got a president, they got officials, officers, captains, generals, right? This is all, this, this has been the blueprint since the beginning. And so as being called the nation of Israel, we have to come back to the order that was set for us because that's the only way we're going to even get out of this madness called captivity. Remember, we went through the, uh, the Hebrew word for cursed, right? The Hebrew word for cursed, it was meaning for one who has denounced the Elohim. One who has denounced it. And to denounce Elohim means you are denouncing the perfect and righteous order that he said. And so we want to get into that. Um, give me Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. So elder, right? Elder, you got two words for elder. First word we all know for elder in Hebrew is Zakain. Zakain. Or you even may see Gadol, right? Gadol. And the meaning of Zakain was a great and mighty man, noble, ancient, and senator. So a great and mighty man, noble, and ancient. One who represents authority. Uh, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Ecclesiastes one and nine, right? And so that's just the that, that's the Hebrew side of it. Then you have the Greek side, which the Hebrew word is uh, but uh, how you say that? Uh, pres presbuteros, which means either advanced in life, a forefather, or I one of my favorite definitions was a member of a great council. Why is that my favorite definition? Because even elders have to prove elders. Even wise men have to prove wise men and see if this man worthy of sitting at my right hand or my left hand. Because on a council, everybody has to trust each other. And so when you look at what's going on in Israel today, you got a lot of people who's, who's calling people elders. But these elders have not been proven by another elder or great man. Half the time, we have not even proven who we're calling elder. 
And it's not to say that the, the elders is wrong, because we have great elders in our nation, without a shadow of a doubt. Right? But we have to understand, just like you don't call anybody father. Just like you don't call anybody son. These are earned positions based upon how you're functioning in the order that's already set. And so we're going to get into that. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. So we're going to get to the understanding of the tabernacle. Come on. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Uh -huh. The thing that hath been, hath been. Read it from it, the top again. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. And there is no new thing under the sun. What has been shall be again. Right? And there is no new thing under the sun. So we have to go back and see, okay, what was the order that the Father set? What was the perfect order that worked for us, that gave us success? We have to be able to see because the, the writings are so solid, are so firm, that if any nation actually practiced it, they would have success in it because it's that grounded in, in the earth. And you actually see it in today when you see these different nations taking a piece of the scripture and of the culture of the Hebrews and applying it to their own. It has worked for them. And so how much more so when the actual people of the book, when they come back to the truth of who they are and to the actual righteous ordained order that the Father has set since the beginning, how much more so will we be on top? Right? Psalms 27 and 4. And so you have an elder is one who is advanced in life. A great and mighty and noble man. One who sits at the council with other great men. This can't be just anybody floating around. This is a man who has been proven not only by the younger, but also elders who actually have fruit, have proven this man to be a great man. Right? Proverbs 27 and 4. Psalms 27 and 4. One thing that have I desired of the Lord, that will I speak after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquiry in his temple. Inquire in his temple. Read one more time. I want you to read slow and loud. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after. So one thing that I've desired of the Most High, that we, especially as men, who are seeking the Most High to be, to be assimilated into the likeness that he's actually created us to be. One thing that we should be desiring and seeking after is what? The Lord. Read. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, <laughs> that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Right. And so that's what we should be inquiring and desiring and seeking after is to dwell in the most high's house. And to behold the beauty and structure and inquire about this temple. Now we know the first actual temple we can say on paper was the time of Solomon. But when you look at the structure of the tabernacle, it was a reflection of what the, the temple is supposed to be. Okay? Okay. And so we want to go back even further than Solomon's temple, but go back to the first established tabernacle of the Most High. Because it said we want to dwell in the house of the Most High. And that was the first place he started to dwell with Israel is in the tabernacle. So let's go to Exodus 18. So what is a tabernacle? Tabernacle is a dwelling place. A tabernacle is actually specifically where you will find the Most High dwelling, even the shepherd or priest. And so as Israel, especially men of Israel, we want to make sure that we're in, as you would say, the Lord's bosom, right? Mm -hmm. That we're in the Lord's bosom. And so we must understand the structure and we must, uh, we must know who we're following. And so we have to make sure everything's aligned. We just can't go around saying because this man got gray hair, he's an elder. That's not how it goes. These are proven men who are who has proven not only are they functioning successfully in raising a family, but they are actually functionally successfully in raising men. 
and we're going to prove why we can say such things like that. Because when you go into the writings and you see how these wise men were chosen, these weren't just no little Johns. These weren't just no random Joes. These men were well known and respected in their communities and well known and respected uh, amongst the, 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 the government of Israel and families. These were people that the people, the nation trusted in. And we can go to that. Exodus 18 and four, uh, 14. Exodus 18 and 14. Take your time when it's out. Exodus 18 and 14. Uh -huh. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all the, that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone? And all the people stand by thee from morning until evening. Right. So we got Jethro. We got Jethro, which is Moses' um, his, his father-in-law. And so he comes to visit Moses and he sees uh, what the Most High has done for, for Israel and for Moses. And then, you know, as a great man, any wise man, they like to examine their surroundings. They like to see the function and how men are working. And so Jethro happens to see how Moses is functioning and how the people are looking up to him to lead them in a specific way. And what Jethro was doing is saying, look, look, you you need guidance. You need wise counsel and you also need help for the tax that you have may be too heavy for you. Like any good man, any wise man with experience in life would suggest that any man, let's say young man in this case, would see, especially with good potential. And so something an elder must carry is, is, is a discerning spirit to know and be able to help a man where he needed to be helped at. And to be able to guide him in a way which leads him back to the Father. And so Jethro was doing this very thing for Moses. Let's keep reading. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me. And I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, the thing that that thou, the thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away, both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Right. So so Jethro sees that this is going to be a burden way too heavy for Moses to do alone. And like any good man should do, you you. As an elder, an elder is supposed to guide the younger in the right path so he won't either make the same mistakes or he can avoid the same mistakes that he avoided in his lifetime. This elder has to be has to have experience, right? A lot of people don't, a lot of brothers don't really have experience like we think they do. This man has to be proven and experienced and learning how to deal with people, right? Like Jethro. And learning how to guide people. Just because you're a father does not mean you actually know how to raise men. What do I mean by that? Every man is not built to be a leader. That's just the truth about it. Just like every man is not built to be a teacher. Every man is not built to be a singer or whatever. A seamstress. Whatever you want to call it. Every man is not built for a specific position. Or every position. Let's say that. And so when it comes to, to, to eldership. And teaching, it's not for every man. But for those who it is for, those who have had that experience in doing that, must be able to apply what they learn so the younger generation can learn from their mistakes and be better than them. And that should be the goal for every elder. The ones that they're teaching, their goal should be, I want to make this man better than me. Because ultimately, the elder gets back the glory for making such a great product. It's just like a wife. Right? A wife is the glory of a husband. And so when you see a great wife, you know that that man put in a lot of good work. He tilled and molded her and nourished her the right way to the point that she is him. Right? She is him. And so the same thing applies when it comes to the father and son or elder and servant. Where are you going to put it? This, this, um, this young man should be a reflection of 
of the one who was raising him. Right? And, that, and in some cases, that could be either good or bad. Because the next generation should always be doing more than the last generation. And if it's not happening, that means something went wrong. And so Jethro, being a great man, is giving Moses, because what he sees from his experience, that this is may, this may be too much for you. And you're going to need wise counsel. Like any great man. Like when you see the, the kings, they always had a, a prophet who saw further than what they could see. Same when it comes down to, to, to the priesthood, when it comes down to teaching, it is always good to have somebody who has experience that can see further than you can see. Because for a lot of us, we can, we can get so caught up in life, we don't really see what's ahead of us. We so caught up in the now and then still looking back, trying to see if that's done with, that we don't see that what's to come and then end up failing. And so this is the purpose of an elder. They're supposed to be able to guide you. Guide you. Come on. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Right. Be thou for the people to God word, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt shew them away, shew them the way wherein they must walk, and the work they that they must do. Moreover, Thou shalt provide out of all the people of able men. Able men. That's a key word. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. What is an able man? A man who is willing to do what he has to do for his people. This man is somebody who is willing to become a living sacrifice for his people. Ready and willing to do for the nation and understanding a purpose that's bigger than himself. Do you have that type of elder run? I know we do. <laughs> we do. I, 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 I have no problem bragging about our elders. Because they got proven fruit. I mean, solid men. Solid to the T. They ain't got to be on Facebook all the time. They ain't got to be on YouTube. They ain't got to be on Instagram. It's the work that they do in the earth that proves them. Words are good. Words are very good. And they can, they can motivate and they can inspire people. But words only can go so far till you got to start putting your hand to the plow. And so you got to look at a person and what are you setting up for the younger generation? And a good elder would do that. They would be doing work not for themselves, but for those who are learn wanting to learn and how to make their nation greater than themselves. This is how you know what type of elder you're dealing with. Where, where are their fruits at? Everybody's not an elder. They may be elder in age. But as far as elder in position, according to law, nah, that's, that's something that has to be proven by works and not by lip service, man. Come on. Such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness. Read that from the top again. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. Such as fear God. So this man, one thing, let's see, do we fear Elohim? Does he keep the law of his commandments? Is he one that tries to bend the law to his own understanding and to live his own type of life? Or does he try to follow the law to the best of his ability as the most high to set it? Come on. Men of truth, hating covetousness. Hating covetousness. Not sitting here trying to steal man because they want numbers in their congregation. Not sitting here trying to put on the front, taking other men's wives and, and taking other men's sons. Men who actually respect honor. See, we it's becoming tight. I know it during my time. I ain't, I ain't even that old. But during my time, we still had a, 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 a sense of honor. You know what I'm saying? Like the saying honor amongst thieves. Mm -hmm. We had that sense of honor. Like, oh, okay, that's your, okay, cool. You know, much respect. Nowadays, Brothers don't even care. Oh, that's your wife. That's that's your son. That's your servant. Shoot, they do better over here with me. Yeah. Covetousness. You see that within our nation, yeah. right? They done, they done perfected no respect to persons. 
You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and it's getting ridiculous. But the, the beautiful thing about this, even as the times get worse, the nation does get greater to an extent. That is the truth. Because men, renowned men, are now starting to come out the dark and rise up because they see younger men actually trying to serve. Actually trying to get in a position. Those who are admitting now, you know what? We ain't got it all. And I really truly believe it's, it, our generation is, is is that generation who who's who's going to just seek that truth in the end and be honest with ourselves and say we ain't got it right. We didn't get it right as younger ones, and we ain't got it right now. And so now, with that being said, elders now do have to come out the dark and help those who are actually seeking to learn, who are actually seeking to get things right for the nation, not just babble at the mouth, but actually put hand and plow and actually start telling the earth and righteousness. And so these are things we got to look for. These are how you prove people. Just like an elder has to prove a young man. Or can you submit? Can you humble yourself? Can you admit to yourself, you know what? I ain't got it right, elder. Can you teach me? Because when, 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 and the thing is, both submit to each other in such a way. Both submit to each other. The, the greater submits to the, to the, to the least, and the least submits to the greater. And it becomes a God. A God. And so that should be the goal. Not to just usurp or, 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 or not get in order, but let's become one. Teach me what you know. I'll give you my youth so I can, I can still push the very thing you left off at. Okay? Okay. Let's get reading. Hating covetousness and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter that they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter that they shall judge. So shall on the top again. Verse 22. <laughs> And let them judge the people at all seasons. And this shall be that every great matter that they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter that they shall judge. So it shall be easier for thy life, and they shall bear the burden with thee. Right, and so that should be the goal is to help each other. And this is what these elders and these wise men was for. They were supposed to help lift the burden off Moses and we all balance it out. And that's the thing when it comes to the younger and the, and the elder. The younger should be striving to make it easier for the elder so the elder can do more work for them and have more to pass down. So when it's our turn to give back, we set the tone because our elders showed us. This is what an elder should be, one who is setting the tone to the point that he has left a man just like himself on this earth. One who has left an inheritance. An inheritance is just not speaking it's not doing thousands of classes. Uh, 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 inheritance is also something tangible. Something that you can touch and actually build upon. Like what? Land? Money. Businesses? Family? Money? Ooh, no. Right? Different things that you can build upon and make greater. But if all we're doing is fiddling our fingers and reading the scriptures all day, then, you, then things happen. We left doing the same cycle again of trying to figure it out. And so that's why I'm thankful for my elders because, man, like they, they set a tone, a vicious tone that whether you like it or not, it's going to get done. It's going to get done. And it's been proven in all righteousness to be stable. And so you got to ask yourself, what type of elder do you have? Right? What is an elder? What, what does one? What does an elder actually do? And we see it's not just about gray hair. Numbers one and fourteen. So now we're going to see. Now we got to Jethro. Actually, keep reading. Finish that. I'm sorry. Read from twenty-two to down twenty-four. What was it again? Exodus twenty-two. Exodus twenty. Uh, Exodus eighteen to uh, twenty-two. And let them judge the people at all seasons, 
And it shall be that every great matter that they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So it shall be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden of with, with thee. Right. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So then what, what did we just see here? We saw decency, we saw order, we saw balance. Not just on Moses, but we also saw the balance within the people mm -hmm. because now we had a balanced forefront that helped lead the people. And that's what we got to have in our community. Elders got to start getting together, Forming. formulating a plan, submitting one to another, as we have already seen, and start formulating a plan for this younger generation. Because this younger generation is hungry. This younger generation is trying to figure it out and trying to find out Yah. They're trying to figure out the Elohim. Elohim of our fathers, right? Mm -hmm. And so it takes for one who has been functioning in such a position to be able to teach one who wants to function in that same likeness. And the reason we have in this class is because we got to really establish what an elder is and ask you, are you under an elder who's actually, go, who's actually willing to sacrifice himself for you? Right? We can't keep throwing words around. And I get it. I used to do it. I, I used to do it. What's up, Elder? Shalom, Elder. Shalom, Elder. Right? Not really understanding what an elder was. And so it took me for me to actually get deeper in the studies and actually start to understand the law. And then I looked in the law and then I saw men functioning and looked in the law and saw men and moving like this, this Elohistic council. And I said, oh, <laughs> I found it. Mm -hmm. This is it. So we got to be able to match the words with the actions. We can talk Israel. This one thing about Israel can talk all day. We can talk about every religion all day. But when we start to look at ourselves, are we actually functioning like the book we trying to teach to everybody else? Whether that be elder, a uh, teacher, a uh, captain, a uh, general, a uh, husband, a uh, wife, a uh, children. Are we, are we functioning in the titles that we're calling ourselves the right way? That's a real question you need to ask yourself. Are you functioning in the very title that you're calling yourself? Because if not, you need to reconsider and humble down. Because we, in this, we are literally in a season where the children of light are coming out and getting back in line. And it's not going to be by this, 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 uh, this dynamic uh, beam of light. It first starts with us. When you read in, in the time of Moses, when you read in, in, in the prophets and in other... It started with the man willing to do what he had to do. Most I didn't just come and he just did things. No, we had to be willing to do it. Just like in the New Testament, the Basara. You didn't get healed until you actually wanted to be healed. Israel got to ask yourself, are we ready to be healed? And if so, we got to go back to what has been. And what was established by the Creator. So let's see what was established amongst men. Numbers 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month in the second year, after they were come, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye in the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by houses, of, of their fathers. No, it said their mothers. By fathers. Their mothers. They're by fathers. By, by their mothers. By fathers. By their fathers. These families were established and the houses were established by their fathers. This was the order that the creator set. There is no way you could have been in any type of position. Captain. Uh. General, prince, priest, 
wise counsel without proving that even your family was functioning in success and was assimilated to the man of that house. And we're doing a lot of things as backwards. And then expecting the same results as righteousness. That is called insanity, my friends. And it would never work out like that. And so when we understand the function, how Elohim has put the man as the head, as the judge, as the prophet, as the king, and the priest of his house. Men must first understand and function successfully in that area before moving up. And we got people in positions that they have not proven themselves to be yet. And who you gonna get who you gonna get proven more by rather than great other great men who have been successful in these functions? We got this thing of even men, we got this thing of. Want to move men out the way and say, oh, Elohim said it. Elohim told me. When it's in, in the writings that Elohim always sent a representative to prove and show people the way. So how is it somebody who has not been successful in this area, the most high to say, oh, you good. Jump up to this. It's not sound right. It's not. Balanced thinking. This is, is an illusion that we have puffed ourselves up to think was right. And so we got to make sure that we align to the T with this book. We want to get out of this situation. And it starts with us understanding our elders. And what is an elder so we can follow the right ones. Because a lot of us have been following the wrong ones for so long and then wondering why 20 years later you're doing the same exact thing you were doing 20 years before you got the truth. What are you doing different? Are you being set up for success? Come on. Take ye the sum of all congregation of the children of Israel after their families by the house of their fathers with the numbers of their names, every male by their pole. From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel. Thou and Aaron, and Aaron shall number them by their armies. And with you, there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his father. Every one what? One house of his father. Every one head of the house of his fathers. And so what we're seeing is the order established by man. It was a certain level you must have been successful at to be able to move on to the next one. To be able to truly say, I'm functioning in the way that my father would have me. And so when it's time for me to turn back, I can now build up a man in the same function. That makes sense to you? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us, we, 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 we grew up in dysfunction with our fathers, and then we think that we can actually teach other men how to be fathers when we haven't even got all the tools ourselves. Whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, you still have to be taught first how to be a son if you didn't learn it at the proper age. Okay? Okay. And so what we see is... is, is it is the Elohim establishing the order of men amongst the nation and how men should move at a certain time in their life. And so when it came to representing the nation, the Most High took men, able men, who were established as the heads of the house of his fathers. All right, can you move that for me real quick? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so now we get to see the process of men. We get to see that process. So let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 1. And now we're going to see the charge that was given to eldership. Let's see the charge that was given to eldership. These be words, these be the words which Moses spake unto Israel on the side of Jordan. You in Deut Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 9. Deuteronomy 1, verse 9. Uh -huh. 
And I spake unto you at the time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. Right. The Lord your God hath multiplied you. And behold, you are this day as the stairs of heaven stars. for multitude. Stars of heaven for multitude. Uh -huh. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are and bless you as he has promised you. Right. How can I my how can I myself alone bear you Cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Right, so Moses is trying to pretty much tell the people, well, uh, this burden, this weight that I'm carrying is too much just for me alone. And that because the most high has blessed us, which he has. Even in this time, he's he's multiplying people by by the thousands coming into this truth now, right? Okay. And we got to get to a place, you know, and, and whether whether we di disagree on doctrine, uh, whether we disagree on w what the language is, or uh, what the name is, uh, how family structure is, we got to come to a place and say, you know what. All these people are coming in and we truly don't know what to do by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what can we do so that when as these people are coming in, we actually have a functioning system that will last beyond our lifetime? Because that's what we should be focusing on. What can we do and set, set in place where the generation after and a generation after and a generation after not will not have to change the system but perfect it and make it greater than where it was. And that's starting with people, and mostly the elders who've been in this thing long enough, to say, let's put things to the side, let's come together, and let's figure this thing out. Let's have a sit down. Let's, dis let's discuss doctrine then. Right? And we saw, and, and, and it's crazy, it is real to the point where they don't even want to sit down no more. Right? If you think about all the schools, that I failed. Think about all the, the ministries, assemblies that are no longer in existence or even underground. Right? You have to ask yourself what actually happened. And a lot of times you'll find out it's because there was no true structure in the beginning anyway. There was no true balance. And so I believe Israel has, a t has, has an opportunity now with so many souls coming into the fold. With so many, um, with so many great elders, really great elders we have, to finally say, you know what? Let's have a sit down. We've been doing the same thing for twenty years, and we're getting the same results. The only thing is changing is numbers. Let's do something different. And when we come to that point, you you'll start to really see the government of Israel. You'll start to see the strength of our elders. We have some great. Elders out there, I'm trying to tell y'all. Great. And I ain't just talking about my elders. I'm not, it's other elders I've seen. That they're great men. Great men. And a lot of times, all it takes is for brothers to sit down and reason. Crazy thing, we'll reason with the white man before our own people. We'll reason with the Chinese man, the Arab man, the African man before our own people. And then we'll fix our mouth and say, oh, we in the same predicament. But the thing about change is, in order for you to see change, you've got to change yourself. And so this is what we're doing. We, 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 we're, we're weighing out the, the, the scale. We're seeing what, what type of man should, or, or, yeah, what type of man should we be looking for? Right? Because you got to think about your salvation. And you have to understand the men included. That it's going to take a man to show you the way. It's going to take, just like it takes a woman to be led by a man to understand the Elohim, it's going to take another man to lead a man to understand Elohim. Brothers, we've got to get out this mindset that, that, oh, it's just the woman that submits. Oh, no. Because for you to even teach her how to submit, you must have submitted yourself first. That's like me trying to teach somebody how to tie a shoe and I don't know how to tie my shoe. It makes no sense. So you gotta be able to teach, you gotta be able to first act 
and show that you know how to submit for others that you are leading to submit themselves. That's how this thing works. But you do it to righteous elders, one who has proven fruit, one who is able, great and mighty, who actually sits amongst other elders where they can sit here and converse, reason, and prove each other. Not just one floating around on the block, <laughs> sitting in there with just a camera on himself. No, what type of man is he around? Who's building him up? Because you can never stop learning. So who's building him up? Huh? Who's raising him up? Everything is always a proven fact in different levels. That's how this thing was set. And so you see that going on in Israel where these men had to be certain type of men. It wasn't just any man in the camp. It wasn't just men because they had gray hair. No. These were renowned great men who have proven to be able to stabilize people in the right way. Let's get back to it. Take ye wise men and understanding and know among your tribes and I will make them no, no, read it slow. Read it slow. Come on. I will make them no, move. from top. Take ye wise men. Take ye wise men. Uh -huh. And understanding. And understanding. And knowing all I mean, and among known, your tribes. And known among your tribes. Come on. And I will make them rulers over you. So three key things. It was un a man of understanding. A man who was known amongst his people. How were you known? You were known by your works. You were known by the things that you did for your family and the people. And it also said he was going to make these men rulers. Right? What does that mean? Rulers is a person who guides you. That's all that is. We got this. I don't know what this thing is. We think that, that submitting to a man is, is, is beyond us. We think submitting to a man is so uh, is, is so beneath us or that it turns into idolatry or something or, or, or worship, man worship. Right? It's always been men submitting to men. It's always been the younger submitting to the elder. You can look that up in the Old Testament and you can look that up in the uh, so-called New Testament, which we will show you. So if you think it's beneath yourself to submit to a man and a higher authority and a, and, and a greater man than yourself, guess what that is? What is a greater man? A greater man is one who, who has more, who is proven to have more. That's all that is. So we got a problem with submitting to a greater man than ourselves. Yet we want to be like this man, in a sense. For you to be successful, you have to learn from a successful person. How you how are we going to how am I get successful for, for somebody just as broke as me? Or, or 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 don't got it or got the same amount of experience as me. No, you actually need somebody who's been proven to go through the trial and error. And tribulation and still successful. A man who was who stood in the way of the fire and came out as gold. That's the type of men you follow. That's the type of men we follow. Proven men. Not just one who jaw jack, but actually put hands to the plow and can prove it. Not only through their families, but their successful endeavors. And how they've been raising men. This is what an elder is. We got to get out of the habit of just calling anybody an elder. Just like we got to get out of the habit of just calling everybody ock. Ah, everybody's not an ock. Ah, every brother's not an ock. Ah. Or a sister. These are people who would give their lives for you. You got to understand, we got to stop being so naive and blind. That very person you may be called an elder or ock wouldn't even think twice if they would give their life to you and, and, and won't even be there for you. So you got to really consider who you call in these names. Just like you don't call you by Elohim. There's only one Elohim. 
These are our names. And we got to stop giving away so easy. Just like you got to have Israel giving away our heritage to people. All willy-nilly. It's the same thing we was doing during the time of, uh, in the wilderness and uh, during the time of Shaul. All that stuff, man. We give away our own too easy. Where it has to be proven and earned. Because all other nations understand this. All other nations know this. You're not just about to come in their house and take stuff and, 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 and take their culture and do all this. And they just sitting there. It's okay, Billy. It's, a, it's okay. No. You got to be proved. You got to be shown that you're worthy to be amongst them. And if we... Huh? Like the Avatar movie. Right. Like, good. Like the Avatar movie, right? Where Israel like to compare himself to Avatar. <laughs> and we don't even function like that. We let anybody in. And we're supposed to be sacred and holy people. Come on. And ye answered me and said, The thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men, and known, and men, I mean made. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, uh huh. Of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, captains over hundreds. And captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. Right, and what? And I charged your judge at that time, saying, Here are the causes between your brethren. Right. And judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the strange that is with him. See. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but you shall hear the small answer. Small, you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of a man, for the judgment is God. Right, so start right there. And so this is have to be a person with balance, like them, those characteristics that we see in Titus 2 about the aged man, the mature man, right? You got to be temperate, compassionate, uh, what else? Patient, right? With different, huh? Slow to anger. Slow to anger, right? A man who can, who can be able to think before he speak, not swayed by emotions. This is the characteristics of an elder. One who can give you sound advice, advice and not think of himself while he's doing it. Because you'll find people like that. They'll give you advice that actually benefits themselves more than it actually benefits you. But a true elder is one who gives you advice and not think about himself. Because that's what it is. An elder just is a higher man. Who, who who become a greater sacrifice for his people. Right? Mm -hmm. And so these were these type of men. Men who didn't respect the person. They just, the, the law was the law. The truth was the truth. And, I, and they said out of compassion and love, but the truth stands. Right? We got even leaders. Leaders amongst our people who play favoritism. Right? You may have some elders too who play favoritism. But a true elder and leader is one who is not about respect the person, but it's about balance. Just like the father is about just weights and balance, this is the same mindset as an elder who's representing the Elohim should have. A mind of balance. And so what you see here is that very balance. That you, no matter if the if the if the if the uh if the situation was small or great. You should be able to still balance out the judgment on it and not be afraid of men. Right? So that's another thing. A lot of us are scared of what men going to say, brothers going to say about truth. Truth is truth. Remember, they persecute you. They, go per they persecute Christ first. That's the purpose of this thing. And so this is a man who's not, who's not, who's not afraid, afraid to stand up to any man for, for y'all's sake. Right? And like I said, I don't always give double honors to our elders. I see it all day. I see it all day. And they got wives who represent them well. You see? That, that's what you should be looking for. How is this family representing him? 
Uh, is, is he still bringing that same? Is he bringing that same mindset he does with the family to the nation? Because all this is the same structured mindset. It's just a greater purpose now, rather mm-hmm. than just family. And real men, men of the of families, heads of families, and men of the most high should be able to do that. Right? He should be able to multiply himself through men. He ain't always got to be C, but he should be able, be able to multiply himself, which is ultimately multiplying the Elohim to function in a way that helps lead the nation. This is what we have to see. And this, for those who are seeking eldership, or have eldership and asking questions, these are things you have to see. Right? Look, you read. And I commanded you at that time all things which ye shall do. And when ye departed, I mean, when we departed from Horab, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness. Okay. We'll go to 1 Timothy 4 and 11. I ain't even about to have y'all here long. It's about to be a quick in and out class. First Timothy. First Timothy four and eleven. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. Right, be an example of the believers. To be a believer is not just by words, but it's action it's, it's by action and deed. So what are you doing? What are you showing to the people that you are a true believer of Mashiach? That you are a true man of Yah? Change your ways. But I change your ways. Are you the same person you was in year one? Are you the same person you was in year two, year three? Are you the same person you was three months ago when you walked into the truth? Are you the same person you was 20 years ago when you came to the truth? And if you haven't improved, if you haven't improved yourself, then you, like you said, you need to think about your ways. Because this is a dangerous thing. You, you want to call yourself a, uh, an elder. People want to call people elders or, or teachers. Because at the end of the day, when, when judgment comes, blood is on your hands. Right? And that's one thing. And it's very dangerous. And I say this all the time because it, it truly is and it could be scary. Blood is on your hands. <laughs> your people's lives is in your hands. And how you lead the people is going to be on you. And if you ain't, if you know you ain't in the right position to do it, then you might want to step down. And if you're following somebody who you know that really ain't all the way there, then you need to remove yourself. And go find the one who fits what you need. Because the worst thing you can do is be led knowing you getting led astray. And because you like a person, you go into damnation yourself. Israel gotta be it's gotta stop being a respective person to really consider are we in the right standings? Are we in the right way? Are we walking the way? Right? The ways of, as my elders say, the ways of the kids and redeemer. Are we walking in that path? Because that's what an elder should be able to do is to redeem. His brother. He should be able to redeem his family. Because that's what true men and Elohim do. We redeem people. We redeem our people. And if you're not functioning in that type of mentality, then this is just not the area for you. This is not the nation for you. Because we function and work together as a body. As a body. Not one individual. Not one person getting all accolades is a person we or we function as one person, which is Mashiach. We function as a Mashiach together. And we when we understand that, we should be when we understand that we should have a more willing hand to help one another grow. Not just use people for our own benefit or or or, or just throw them away. It's not it's not how we should go. Right? People, men, young men should be able to serve with alacrity, as the elder would say. Right? Serve with cheerfulness. And so both parties, all sides got to consider their ways. Am I leading these people the right way? Am I serving the right person? And if you're not, if you're not feeling these characteristics, you got to really consider. Are you following the great man? 
Are you following the man? No, not just by his words, but what has he changed in the earth for his people? What type of inheritance does he have for his children? How does his family look? Oh, he's out there teaching with no family? Well, why is he out there? See, this is the thing. Israel got to realize the thing we're actually trying to get back to is family. We got this thing about all, all, all we're doing is just, just prophesying. What are we prophesying about? If you really look at it, we're prophesying about getting back to the beginning. And if we and when you understand now, you understand the beginning was family. Before we became a nation, we were a family. Okay? Okay. And so that's the that's the mindset that we should be having is getting back to biblical family structure. And it's only going to be by way of those who are already functioning successfully in that area. Come on. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortion, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Right. Which was given by the prophecy. And this is where the elders should be able to peek, uh, peek out and see. They should be able to see the gift in you and enhance it. With their experience, an uh, elder should be able to guide you on how to control and, and, and maneuver this gift into the way that it blooms. Not shelter it, but it blooms. Okay? Okay. Come on. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying of the hands on, laying of the hands of the prop, prop, uh, posterity. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may be apparent to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And these are things that we should be able to look to in people that is guiding you. You should be able to see that this person is not looking to you to benefit themselves, but they're actually trying to enhance what you already got. You should see this person who, who believes in the doctrine of Mashiach and who believes in the Torah, right? And, and has a spirit of charity, has a spirit of faith, and, and truly purity uh, for the betterment of the nation, right? We got it. We got it. We really have to stop the yapping at the mouth all day long. And really got to examine when we understand what belief is in the scripture. Again, to believe means it's a person who does, mm -hmm. who functions and, and, and do things. And so we have to really ask ourselves, when we look at it from that angle, do we actually believe in the book that we're promoting? And it's okay to be honest with yourself because you have an opportunity to correct yourself and say, you know what? I ain't been functioning in the, in the book that I promote. I'm not functioning in the way that, that 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 my fathers would have me go. Because if we did, we probably would have been out of this captivity by now, right? We probably would have been out of this misery and bondage that we're in. And all these things that are happening to our people. If we were actually functioning in the way of our fathers, our, our daughters wouldn't be given to other men in other nations. Our sons wouldn't be trying to sleep with men or, 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 or get with other nationality of women because he would know that the structure that he has come from is the only way. Is the only way. And so it's one of the things we just got to be honest with ourselves and say we have not been functioning. Whether you in a camp, assembly, congregation, homestead, whatever. If you're not functioning in the way that the Torah say, then you're not really functioning at all. You actually dysfunctioning, and you're going backwards. And to the and to the ones who are truly seeking uh, truth and structure of the Elohim, we turn back to the Torah, and we and we structure our family in such a way that it's not about us. But when we're gone, our family will be a lot better off than where we let, or than where we came from. And that should be every man's goal to make his father's name greater. 
It should be your goal should be to be able to make your elder's name greater. But again, what is if, if you don't know what an elder is, how can you make anything greater? How can you make a name greater if you don't even know whose name you're making greater? And so we got to start functioning like that. First Peter uh, 5. So now let's see the anointing. I like to call it the anointing of elders. Let's see the anointing of the elders. First Peter 5. First Peter 5. We're going to start at 1 and read 1 through 10. The elders which are among you, I exhort. Who am? Hold on. The elders which are among you, I exhort, come on, who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Right. Now let's see the charge of the elders. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. Right. Start right there. Feed the flock of Elohim which is among you, taking the oversight. Feeding the flock is literally just not by words, but it's by deed. An elder is just like a father, right? I, I believe it's the scripture that talks about that, that that, uh, that you do not rebuke an elder, but you entreat an elder like a father. And so that's the purpose of an elder. Now, I'm, spe I'm specifically speaking to those who may not have a father or a big brother or a husband. Let's just say that. Father, husband, or uh, a big brother, right? An elder is a father figure to you. It is one who is like your father who is supposed to guide you as your father in the way that you should go. Just like the scripture, Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way they should go. This is the purpose of an elder, to train up, to feed the flock, right? And to take oversight, to protect and provide provision for the sheep so they know what direction to go in, right? And the ultimate goal should be what? To get back home? And to get our families back in righteous structure. And so remember, in all things, a person who's functioning in a teaching stance must have proven fruit to say that this person can teach me because he has had experience in this area. Because a teacher is not just a general teacher, you can be a teacher in music, a uh, teacher in, in, in making clothes. Uh, teacher of martial arts, different things. Agriculture. Agriculture. But guess what? Whatever function you're going to be teaching, you got to be able to say or show that I have proof of fruit in this area. Right? And so we go around calling people elder, but what's, where's the proof of fruit? Right? Where's the proof of fruit? These are the things you have to look for. This ain't no talking down on nobody. We're just talking about the examination period. It's just like a marriage. You don't get into a marriage without examining a person and say, okay, what does this person have to offer? What Am I investing my time in, or money or whatever the case is the right thing? Am I going to get a, uh, am I going to get a uh, return on my investment? Right? Am I going to be able to multiply and grow from where I come from? These are the same thing when it comes to, you know, choosing the elder and the elder choosing the son. We got to be able to benefit each other. And so just like when it comes to elder, you, you, okay, if you're my elder, then what do you have that I, I really, because it would come down to you, you, you seek elders, you seek uh, teachers or whatever the case, because they have something that you want. And so you have to ask yourself, what do you actually have that I want? What do you actually have that, that I, I can take, take from you and multiply and not only me making your name greater because I'm showing how much I thank you for what you taught me, but now I can increase my house within this. This is the purpose of eldership is to provide provision, right? To provide provision and, and, and feed the flock, feed them spiritually, mentally. I know our elders feed us physically too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but that's real though. You got to be able to clothe your, your, your sheep, man. Right? You gotta be able to take care and nurture. It ain't just by word. I keep saying it, but it's the truth. Because Israel got this thing, we we're so swayed, we so beguiled by words. But at the end of the day, words don't mean nothing if the action don't back it up. Right? I mean, people we got out of here, uh, I'm talking about they're gonna do something for the, like this give an example, a building 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to teach you. We're going to do this and get a building. And, and then and there's nothing. So, oh, I'm going to do this. We're going we gonna to build this up. And I'm going to take this. And then, then five years later, we still at the same place we was five years ago. Right? These, this, this, this has to be people already proven and successful in these areas. Not people you're sold on because of a bunch of promises. These are people you actually sold on because they have proven and shown you that they have already been successful in this area. So are you going around calling people elder, right, who haven't truly deserved the title? Have you, have you actually earned that? Have they earned these titles? Read two again. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. Take the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of ready mind. But of what? But of a ready mind. But of a ready mind. Come on. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. So what does that mean? To be an example. To be an example is another word to say be an example. Yeah. One who is a reflection. Now let me watch my word because I know Israel that they like to run off and say, oh, look what he did. No. An example of the flock. And so what it's saying is this person has to be an example um, of one who can lead the flock. Who leads the flock is shepherd. Who is the chief shepherd? Mashiach. And so we have to be a reflection of the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. Those who lead sheep. You have to be a reflection of this Mashiach. You have to be one who has become a living sacrifice to his people. By deed. Right? People have to earn this. People, that's, that's a trust thing, really. It's really a trust thing. To trust somebody to lead you in a way that you should go and you really don't know where you're going. And what I mean by that is you, you, you pretty much submitting all your authority to a, a, a greater man so that they can guide you. It can be a scary thing. And this is why we have to go through the process of who we who's going to be our elder because this person ultimately is going to guide you like a father would. And if you're not choosing correctly or you don't know what an elder should, should be doing, then you could be led astray. And you ain't gonna have nobody to blame but yourself. Come on. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. The chief shepherd, with the chief shepherd, Mashiach, come on. When the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that is fatted not away. Faded not away. Uh-huh. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves to an elder. So now we see it again. For those who just think it's the Mashiach you submit to. You submit to one who is, who, who is in the image of Mashiach. Right? Likewise, ye younger men, submit yourselves to the elders. You're supposed to give all your authority and that essence to the elders so they can guide you and, 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 and proportion you in the, the correct way. Because it's been so long that we sat here and made our own decision. And look where that has gotten us. It's gotten us nowhere. Actually, it did. It got us way worse than our grandparents or parents was. Because we are in a society that is against us. There's nothing in society that is for us. Not their school systems. Not their leadership. Not their government. Not their family structure. Nothing about this culture here is for the so-called black man, woman, and child. Nothing. And so when we get past ourselves and, and look past this pride of feeling like you, you ain't got to listen to no man who ain't your father. When half you ain't got no father. When we get past this thing, then we can actually say we are going somewhere as a nation. I'm not saying some people are not functioning like this. What I'm saying as a nation, we're not. So when we get better in that aspect, you will see the actual improvement of unity, love, 
respect and actually doing some functional things with each other. Because all this talking is coming to an end. And it's almost coming to an either you put up or shut up. Just sit back and let those who truly want to want to uh want to lead and are showing these traits, let them lead. He do it for me real quick. So I'm gonna read it again. First Peter five and five. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you sub subject one another, one to another, and be clothed with humility. Humble yourself. Humble yourself to a righteous man. Right? Because scripture does talk about not submitting yourself or serving a man uh, less worthy than yourself. So I understand that and I, and I agree with that. Right? But to the, to the man who is greater, you're supposed to serve them with, with cheerfulness because you're going to want the same thing when you get older. Just It's just human nature. It's the truth. A lot of y'all just fix your mom and say, I ain't what I want. But the truth is, you, you do. That's why a lot of y'all out here with no elders, no, no provision in teaching. Because you want that type of attention. But when you actually sincere about it and you actually want to serve and do for the people, it just naturally comes. You ain't got to force it, right? What did, what did I say up top? You, you ain't got to uh, do it with constraint. You ain't got to force it. It just naturally comes because this is the most high exhorting you, not yourself. Come on. Verse 5. Likewise, ye younger men, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Give grace to the humble. Uh, Sirach 32. Sirach 32 and 1. If thou be made the master of the feast, lift not thyself up. If that if thou be made master, the one who looks over the sheep during the time of feast, right? I'll give you one minute. Alright, go ahead. Read from the top again. If thou be made the master of the feast, lift not thyself up, but be among them as one of the rest. Right. Because remember, the saying is what? The greatest king is the greatest servant. One who has lowered himself as a servant to the people as Mashiach did, right? Mashiach lowered himself as a servant. He watched the disciples' feet. And so what he's saying is you, you, the ones who he has given uh, the privilege, the ones who he has given the right to, to be a, pro a provider of the sheep, right? And all things, it's telling you to humble yourself just as Mashiach did. And so as an elder, you're supposed to be one um, to, to, to pretty much... Humble yourself. Come on. Lift not thyself up, but be among them as one of the rest. Right. So you're not supposed. You got people out here. I'm a, I'm a priest. So and so, general. So and so. I'm this. I'm that. Right. And that's cool. But the most I say, you 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 supposed to be amongst the people as one of the rest. Because we in a time where where we're all servants. You want to be really technical. We're all servants, right? We're all servants. And so as one who, who, who's in the natural, the greater, you're supposed to be as the lowest. But we got a lot of people trying to, you know, shine and be, be, be in the limelight and, 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 and always on the scene, want to be the face of everything. But the greatest was always the ones who was in the backdrop. Just like um, when you go in the scripture, you'll see like John, John E. Mercer, you know, John the Baptist. If you actually read what Mashiach said, Mashiach said he was, he was the greatest man on earth besides himself. He was even greater than some of the angels for the work he did. Mm. And when you look at from that, when you look at it from that lens, it actually makes you want to become a greater servant. Mm. Like, you know, I don't want none of that. I just, let me serve. Because at the end of the day, it should be about receiving the crown of life from the Most High. 
and not receiving the clout of, of men, yeah. not receiving accolades from men. And a lot of us, and a lot of it got to do with the social media. We get, we, we get too caught up in this that we miss the greater gift. Right? Yeah. We miss the greater gift. And so we got to come, we got to get back to a place of lowliness and humility and humbleness. Because we have gotten this sense of pride since we found out who we are in America. We have. We think we know it all. We think we got it all together. And, and it's just not the case. It's just reality of it. But I'm telling you, when the elders, those who, who've been doing it know, when they come together, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's going to be like a closed fist. You won't be able to stop it because it's going to be that much power. And it's coming. It's coming. But we got to make sure we choose wisely who we got, who we're serving. So read that for verse 2 again. And what thou hast done, all thy office, take thy place, that thou mayst be merry with them. And receive a crown for thy well ordering of the feast. Right. Speak thou that art the elder, for it becometh thee. But with sound judgment and hinder, not miss. Hallelujah. And this is what we should look for, elders. So now let's get an example real quick. Let's get Genesis 12. Genesis 12 and 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, mm -hmm. Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. Right. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee, and in these and thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Right. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram went seventy and five years old. And so what you see now is this this leader of ours, this father of ours, he taking he taking the submissive seat, right? Mm -hmm. And now he has to sacrifice. You see him now going into an order of now. Remember, this is how we judge an elder. Okay, what have you sacrificed? What have you given up? What have you been? What has been proven that given to you that you've been able to multiply? And so we actually see this order going in with Abraham giving up his family. What happens when you be submissive? And because of your submissiveness, you shall be blessed. And not only that, but your family as well. Mm -hmm. This is the very thing we should be able to, when we see somebody's family, who we're calling teacher, elder, or leader, whatever the case is, we should look at their family and say, okay, oh, he know what he's doing. He's obviously went through the process of molding and telling his family that I can now trust him with my life. We should be able to see this process or successful process in a man's family. Mm. And if we don't see that, how can we give such a title that has not been earned? And so this is what we see from Abraham going through that process of submitting to the Most High's word. Come on. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in and thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot with, with him, with, went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, and Lot his brother's son, mm. and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go in the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. Right. So now you see. What you see going on now is an elder man taking a younger man under his wing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because this was his brother's son. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so what he did was took his brother's son and said, I'm going to take you with me. And not only did he take him with him, but he gave him access to all that he was blessed with. And see, that's what an elder should be able to do is once you have submitted yourself to this elder and, and took in the right process of assimilation, this is what happens. You then 
have inherited his blessings, which now become your blessings. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so this has to be an exchange of good energy. I'm submitting myself. Therefore, I'm off to mend myself. I should be looking for something in return. From the elder's perspective, I'm investing in you. So therefore, if I'm investing in you, I expect a return of my investment through your submissiveness. And when these two understand each other, we have what again? A car. We have a car. And we're missing this understanding when it comes to eldership. There has to be a give and exchange going on. It can't just be give, 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 or take, take, take. It has to be a transfer, right? Mm -hmm. A covenant. Yeah. It has to be a covenant made, right? And you don't make covenants with anybody. A covenant was something sacred. A covenant was something where there were instructions and things that were going to be exchanged through these instructions, okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's how it should be. This is this, If this is what you're saying, you have an elder, I mean, this man is saying he's giving himself to you. So that you can multiply him and, and take what he's giving you and make it greater. That's how it should be. Not just, oh, because you got gray hair, uh, you my elder now. Oh, because you got a, a lot of wisdom. Although you have nothing proven or where you've applied it. But because you look like the part, you are my elder. Mm. We just giving away stuff and not really understanding the depths of what we're saying. Just like we say, I love you. We say, I love you so loosely and not know the meaning of it. And not know the purpose of why we're saying it. Or we saying it because it's a fad and it sounds good. Israel has lost its understanding of the meanings behind our culture. We got to get back to what has been. Now let's go to a greater example. Let's get into Genesis 13. Now we're going to go into more depth on this relationship with Lot. And his uncle Abraham, our great grandfather. And Abraham went out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where. His tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also which went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents. And so now you see, because of Lot's association with Al Abram, because of his connection and, and, and the relationship with Abram, you now see Lot starting to inherit certain things from the one who he has made his elder mm -hmm. or the one he has allowed to guide him and shepherd him. Mm -hmm. He's now starting to see the benefits of his elder, right? Mm -hmm. Come on. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. For the substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And, and there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Pezerite dwelled then in the land. Mm -hmm. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee. And between my herdmen, herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. For we be brethren. So, and, and this is what you see. Now you see, we see some striving. And a lot of times, most of time we know it's the young one. Mm -hmm. Right? He ain't getting his way. Being sensitive. Things ain't going how he want to go. So he start to buck. He start to buck. And so Abraham pretty much, and this is how humble and how great of an elder and man Abraham was. Because remember, Abraham received all these things. Lot didn't. Lot was just the, the, the one who, was, who got it by association. Not by the connections and the hard work that he put in. Mm -hmm. But it was by Abraham's hand that Lot was allowed to even touch the things that he touched. 
And the thing about it is you see Lot being ungrateful. Why are you having to strike with a man that's blessing you? That makes no sense. How you gonna have a strife? How you gonna have strife with a man who took you and, and, and took took you in under his wing in his bosom and say, I, I, I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna give you this. It makes no sense. But you see, Abraham was so humble. He like, you know what? Ain't no sense of us arguing. I love you that much that I'm not going to allow us to argue. And not only am I not going to allow us to argue, I'm going to even bless you. I'm going to bless you. With land that's actually mine. And so what do we, I want to explain this for, what do we actually see, right? We saw, I'm going to read it again so I'm, you can hear it. So it says this. It says, and the land was not able to bear them. Meaning it, 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 it was, they had too much, mm -hmm. right? And that they might dwell together, for they that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that could, so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. What does that mean? Well, what are we seeing here? Um, lot, lot going off between the herdmen, right? Mm -hmm. Is is lot arguing with the herdmen or? No, he's just strife. He's just simply saying it's strife okay. between Abraham and his people and Lot and his people. Okay. So he basically saying like you know it's ain't no sense of like you said you know ain't no sense of us arguing. So when he said that I pray thee. I'm guessing he's like, I'm going to pray for you. You know, that hopefully that you get over what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And he says, and Abraham said unto Lot, there be no strife, I pray thee between me and thee between me. Basically, so he's trying to bring the peace. Yeah. Right? And so this is what you see. And this is what you would say is a true elder. Mm -hmm. He gave himself, right? He gave more of himself to a man or his people. Let's say that. Who was ungrateful for what they already had. But he was such a great of a man, he didn't mind that. Because at the end of the day, all he wanted was peace. And that should be the end all goal for elders, leaders, whatever. That it, we, we desire peace on earth. And Abraham knew exactly what he needed. Abraham knew exactly what was best for the nation to come. And so he told wife, look, and we're going to read on, read verse 9. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the land, the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou, thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. So he even gave him an option to choose. Mm -hmm. Although he's the greater man. Abraham gave Lot an option on where he wanted to go. Uh -huh. Come on, man. Let's keep reading. <laughs> and Lot lifted up his eyes. So he got excited, right? Mm -hmm. And behold, all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest into Zor. Then Lot chose him, him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeys east. And, uh, and they separated. And they separated themselves, the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan. And Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. And so what you see is, is two things going on. You see an elder blessing the younger. Although the younger is going off and being ungrateful for what he got. But he also, the great thing about elders is elders are supposed to teach you a lesson. Mm -hmm. And so what we see is Abraham in such a way teaching a lot of lesson. Like everything you think you want ain't the best for you. And you'll find out later on 
as Lot was learning his lesson, that the very thing that he should have listened to his, 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 his uncle about mm -hmm. was right. Right? Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of us? We was good. We was good. There was no point of us strife, strife, strifing and fighting and arguing. But because you thought you knew what was best for you, mm -hmm. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to let you learn. At the same time. At the same time. And that's how you know when you got a great elder. Not only do they bless you, but they're, they're going to let you learn your lesson at the same time. That's almost worse than saying you can't do it. <laughs> if you think about it, that's almost worse than that. But sometimes, unfortunately, Israel, we need that. To bump our head and figure out, you know what? Christ, Christ was right. Yeah. You know what? Paul was right. You know what? She got, uh, uh, Moses was right. Abraham, we just can start going on all these people who tried to tell us, and then we just had to figure it out on our own. But that's been Israel, man. That's been Israel, man. So now that we we talked on the elders, now when you come across a, a righteous elder, one who who's worthy of being submitted to, then let's see how the young man should act. Let's see how the younger one should act. Sirach thirty two and seven. Sirach 32 and 7, right? Because this is not just, again, it's not just a one-way street. Ain't no elders going to give you all this and you ain't getting nothing back. No, 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 no. It's, it's levels. It's decency and order. Remember that. Come on. Speak, young man. If there be need of thee, and yet scarcely, when thou art twice asked, let thy speech be short, comprehending much in few words. Be as one that knoweth. And yet hold his tongue. Right. And so even when it comes to younger man and an older man, especially in the midst, younger man should be, be not respectful to keep their mouth shut. Because remember, we don't know nothing. We really don't. We don't know anything. We have not experienced enough life to know anything. And so the best thing we can do is actually be quiet, sit back, watch, and learn. That's the best thing we can do. Mm -hmm. Come on. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. Why? Because you can miss a time to learn. And this was going on a lot. It was, too, it was so much commotion and strife. Mm -hmm. Lot missed his opportunity to actually learn what could happen if he actually listened. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's what happens a lot of time with us. And we miss our opportunity to learn because we always listening just to talk or react and talk rather than listening just, just to hearken and actually apply. And so this is what we have to learn, especially when we know we're amongst great men. Sirach 25, uh, 25 and 1. In three things, I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men mm -hmm. and unity of brethren mm -hmm. the love of neighbors right. a man and a wife that agree together three shorts of men my soul hated and I am greatly offended at their life a poor man that is proud a rich man that is a liar and an old adulterer that doeth doth it if thou hast, hast gathered nothing in the, thy youth, how canst thou find anything in thy, thy age? Mm -hmm. Why not watch this? Come on. Oh, how calmly a thing is judgment for gray hairs and for ancient men to know counsel. Right. So how beautiful it is for, for a thing it is for judgment for gray hairs and for ancient men to know counsel. How how can you actually give counsel if you've never been through it yourself? How are you going to know something if you not have, haven't experienced it? Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. and this is why this even when it comes to to uh to to being a husband and sisters nowadays, and a lot of times we making we've made bad choices because we have no father figure, no elder, but we choose men who are, who are who are broken, who have never been raised by a man who have never taken orders from a man, 
and have never submitted to a man, yet we think this man is equipped to be to be your husbands. Israel truly works ass backwards and wonder why we're getting the result we get. We are failing in making our own choices. And so for those who have made mistakes, you're supposed to, to, to learn from the mistakes and then teach the young one not to make the same mistakes. But how you gonna how you gonna learn from somebody who hasn't went through these things? How you gonna learn from somebody who hasn't proven to 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 test test time? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on. <clears throat> Much experience is the crown of old men, and the fear of God is their glory. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the thing the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that hath joy of his children. A man that has great. That's the first thing. A man that have joy in his children. Then when I watch, it started with this. There be nine things which I have judged judge with my heart. Something I can see and say, okay, this is it. And to be, and it made me happy. And what was the first one? In the tenth, I will utter my tongue, a man that have joy in of his children. Why? Because now we're seeing that the Torah being successful in our lives. Mm -hmm. We are now seeing Torah being applied and exercised in the right way when you see a man functioning with his children in joy rather than in misery. Mm -hmm. Come on. A man that have joy of his children. And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Mm. Well is him that dwelleth with a wife of understanding. Mm. And that have not slipped with his tongue. And that have not served a man more unworthy than himself. Right. Right. Well is him. Stop right there. Go to Sirach 10 and 1. So it says, well is him that dwell with the wife of understanding. And that have not slipped with his tongue, and that have not served a man unworthy than himself. Because if, for you to serve an unworthy man, a man lower than yourself, meaning you just didn't have no discernment. And just furthermore, show that you probably didn't go over the father. Mm -hmm. You didn't know what a man looked like. And this is a lot of mistakes that we see. This is why we got to know what we're looking at and who we are serving. Because it could be our lives and we could, we, we could be serving men that's lower than ourselves if we don't look at the writings and put the writings to the to the fruit. Okay. It match up with that? Okay. Good. I can serve this man. An elder is a renowned man, a great mighty man, a man who has proven, proven himself to not only raise a man, I mean a family, but also men. Have been a co-shepherd. Has been has I can show that he's taken a man from this from a seed and has shown has shown that he's watered this man to make him become a blue a uh, a beautiful flower and bloom. That's a true elder, and we see that man. We we see that now again. I'm, we thankful for for our elders, man. We truly are because they're 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 putting works. They're putting works to the paper, man. We see it. And I want to end it with this Sirach 10 and 1. This is what an elder should look like. Come on. A wise judge will instruct his people. So this man, this renowned man, this great man can be able to instruct his people. Come on. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. So this man has order within himself, within his household, and within his tribe. Come on. As the judge of the people is himself. Mm. So are his officers. And what manner of a man the ruler of the city is. Such are they that dwell therein. Start right there. And this is how you know. This is how you test to see if a man is an elder, a leader, one who guides and shepherds people by the people around him. So consider, really consider who are you calling these titles? And are you calling them these titles vainly because of smooth words? Or can you truly you or can they can, can they truly point and show you exactly what they're talking about?
And this is exactly what an elder is. A great renowned man who is shown through his family and his community to be able to build, mold, protect, and provide for his people. And so with that, thank you again for everybody tuning in tonight. We appreciate y'all. I hope y'all having a great, great uh, week thus far. Um, for those who are starting to prepare for the Shabbat, may the Most High bless you. May He keep you. May He shine His face upon you. Again, double honors, double honors to our elders, um, uh, our immediate elder, uh, Elder Adiah Ben Yehuda. Double honors to to Elder Thomas Murray and the Murray tribe, and double honors to Elder Asa, the Geechee farmers. And all the, the all the brotherhood who stand strong, truth and sincerity, and truly putting the work, work in the earth for the generation to come. And with that, I say shalom. Shalom. All praise to the most high, y'all. Here we go. And you can press finish.